Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to teach you three good command line habits. Uh, open up a terminal window, and you can do that by pressing the Control, Alt, and T keys at the same time, and that works on most distributions. So the first command is sudo apt update, and what this does is it makes sure all your repositories have the most up-to-date information in them. So if you all you have to do is type sudo apt update, press return and enter your password. And that makes sure all your repositories are up to date. But it's more than just updating your repositories in step one, it's keeping your system up to date. Now you can usually do this if you're using Ubuntu or Linux Mint or um, even MX Linux, you can do it from a graphical tool. But each operating system has a different graphical tool that you might use across different desktop environments but if you use the terminal then it's one command and one command that you have to remember across multiple distributions so clear the screen and all you have to do is type clear and then we're going to run sudo apt upgrade and that will upgrade all the packages in your system to the latest versions now whilst sudo apt upgrade is good, what you should really get in the habit of doing is this. So we're going to type clear again and you should instead run sudo apt full upgrade. And this really does give you the full upgrade. It removes old packages, it updates all your packages to the latest. It's the ultimate update tool that you can use. So sudo apt update that keeps your repositories up to date sudo apt full upgrade upgrades all your packages to the latest version in those repositories and they're the two commands that you really need now obviously because i've already run updates before it's already updated my system so the second habit you need to learn is how to install software using the command line now it's easy to use the GNOME Software Center, it's easy to use the KDE Discover tool, and you, what you'll find is every single distribution comes with its own package manager. Now whilst some of them use GNOME, some of you use the KDE Discover, some of them will use their own package managers. If you can get used to using the command line, you don't have to worry, one command line works across all these systems. So how do we do it? So the tool you're gonna to use is apt, as we did before. Um, but this time we're going to install software and see what's installed on our system. So if we do sudo apt list and then double dashes and then we type the word installed, you can see what's installed on your system. Now obviously that went through quite quickly, so you can use the pipe symbol and pipe more. And then you can page through the installed software. If you're looking for a particular piece of software that's installed, for instance Firefox, you can use the grep command and type in the word Firefox. And you can see that Firefox is installed. If you're looking for packages to install, you can do sudo apt search and then look for the package you might want to install. For instance, if you want to install Chromium, sudo apt search chromium and it's that simple now obviously that went through quite quickly so what you can do is you can scroll up like that or you can again pipe out to more and you can see that chromium comes up and you can see web browser there so you know all you have to do is install chromium so if i want to install chromium now i can press the q to get out of more at any point type sudo apt install chromium press y and that will now install the chromium web browser now, whilst installing software using apt is a good thing to do. This is still number two on the list, by the way. Um, if we use our new Chromium browser and say you wanted to install Google Chrome, then you can see you can download the Debian package. If we type ls star.dev, you can see I've got three dev packages in my folder. 
or directory as we prefer to use in Linux. And all we have to do to install this software is sudo dpkg i for install and then the name of the package. Now you can type it in but in a lot of these terminals you can just select the text, right click, copy, right click and paste. So if you want to install a Debian package that way you can do. Because not all packages will appear in the apt search. Now you can see I received an error because it hasn't got this package but what we can do is type sudo apt install lib u2f udev to install the required package and then we can run this command again and Google Chrome will be installed to our system as you can see here So now you know how to update your system from the command line and you know how to install common Debian packages from the command line and there's one more habit I want you to get into and that's installing flat packs from the command line. If you can do that then you don't have to worry about using a graphical tool and trying to get it set up. I'll show you how you can install flat pack if it's not already installed and then how you can run from the command line the search and install for and how to run flat packs from the command line. Luckily, setting up flat packs reasonably straightforward. If you go into any web browser and you search for flatpack.org forward slash setup, you can see there's a setup guide for all of these distributions. And so the one I'm going to be doing today is Debian. And you can see it's got the full instructions here that you can run from the command line. So you don't even need to remember this video. All you need to remember is this web address. What we can do is we can take these commands one by one. So I can copy that. I can paste it in. You see I've already got Flatpak installed, so I don't need to do that. But if, if you didn't, then that would be there. Now, if you are going to use GNOME or Plasma, then you can install the, the plugin by copying and pasting one of these commands. But if you don't want to, then that's fine. And if you can get into the habit of using the command line, that's great. And so the last thing you have to do is add in the FlatHub repository. And all we have to do is copy this command here, click and paste, and that is it. You will, however, have to reboot your system for this to take effect. So here we are back again after a reboot. Press Ctrl Alt T to open the terminal. And now we can start learning some Flatpak commands. So the first thing you want is to run the command Flatpak remote. And as you can see, we've got two remotes. And these are basically where your Flatpaks will come from. You've got FlatHub and FlatHub Verified. And that's what, if those are set up, that's all you need. The key thing for you is to search for flat packs that you might need. So if we do flat pack search, and we can search for something like Steam, and you can see it returns a long list of things. Now that's not very user friendly on its own. If we clear the screen, we can type flat pack search steam and we can type columns equals name and application and that gives you a much shorter output like that and of course we can pipe out to more as we did before and you can see it's a lot easier to see what you're looking for so in this case if we wanted to install steam what we need to do is look for that there. If we press the Q to actually install software, it's flatpak install com.valve software.steam. And then it will give you a list, and you can choose which of the two remotes that you want to install from. So in this case, FlatHub. And then it says, are you sure you want to proceed? And I'll say yes. And now it's going to install Steam to my system as a flat pack. So with that done, if we go to the menus, we go to games, 
you can see Steam is there on the menu and you can run it from the menu. Now with most applications, you can run them from the command line. So if I clear the screen again, if I wanted to run Chromium, for instance, I can type Chromium. And if I put the ampersand, it runs it as a background app. So I, I still get my cursor back at the terminal window, but it will run Chromium. And there we are, Chromium is loaded. If I press return, you see I'm at the cursor, but my Chromium is still loaded. If I want to run a flat pack, what I have to do is type flat pack run and it's the same command as I ran before. So for the install I had run flat pack install com.valvesoftware.steam and so to run it I have to type flat pack run com.valvesoftware.steam and it's, it's, it's displayed an error, but it will still do what it needs to do. And you can see it's updating the Steam environment, and then it will run the Steam update, and then Steam will load, and you'll get to log in. And there you can see Steam has loaded. We can close that now. Now, if you want to see what's installed on your system, you can type flat pack list, and that shows both the applications and run times you have on your system. But if you just want to see the apps, you can just do flat pack list dash dash app like this and you can see all I've got is OBS, Steam and Kuha. If you want to uninstall an application you can type flat pack uninstall and you have to type in the thing that you want to uninstall. So in this case if I want to uninstall OBS project Again, it will ask you whether you are sure, type yes, and it will uninstall OBS. And you see it was that quick. When you did your sudo apt update and your sudo apt upgrade earlier on, that will only update apt packages, which are like your Debian packages. It won't update your flat packs. So to update flat packs, what you need to do is sudo flat pack update. Let me just press Y and it'll update the three packages that we have there. And you can see it's updating those to the latest version. And that's it. That's how you update your flat pack packages. And in fact, that is the end of the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.